every Sunday night and lost our minds. <laughs> uh, the best way to describe what Kikaya is, in general, is that it's kind of a precursor to what we now know as the Power Rangers, made by the same company, Toei, in Japan. And Kikaya is a character who is uh, visually half red, half blue, to show the conflict of good and evil. Because uh, he has an incomplete, he's an android, and he has an incomplete uh, conscience circuit. Uh, so he's always in turmoil, uh, fighting his evil side. And eventually he comes to meet his brother, the Hakaida Destroyer. It's a really great series, it was made into an animated series that was shown on a uh, cartoon network called Kikaida the Animation. Does anybody remember that one? Yeah. Okay, all two of you. Uh, you know, even though, he, and also the original manga by Shotaro Nishimori has been translated into English, which you can uh, uh, view online. Uh, it was a great series, and what made that series great was the star of the show, uh, who played the human half of Kikana named Jiro, uh, played by Mr. Daisuke Ban, who's one of our guests tonight. But we also have the original Ultraman, who really needs no explanation, because I think everybody knows who Ultraman is, right? Yeah. Because we got Ultraman on Channel 2 on Captain Cosmic with Bob Wilkins. Anybody remember Captain Cosmic? Yeah. He still has a Dakota card. Anybody with a Dakota card that's under 60? <laughs> Anyone? Bueller? Nobody? Uh, so Ultraman was great, but also was another big hero, even though he's a monster. God's own. Today we're very lucky here because we have three representatives of the three main genres of uh, special effects monster movies and superheroes in Japan. Godzilla, Ultraman, and Kikaida representing uh, the sort of Kamen Rider, Power Rangers type superheroes. So they are here today, and uh, I'm going to stop talking, and we're going to let them do some squawking. But first, we need a thing. There's a language barrier thing. We have an interpreter. Uh, he's a Rondo nominated uh, audio commentary uh, audio commentator. Worked with me on uh, the Shout Factory's Gamera vs. Barugan. And uh, for those of you, you know, those of you out there who do you know Gamera? Anybody out there know Gamera? <laughs> okay, good. Mr. Jason Barney, our interpreter. Jason, you are here, ladies and gentlemen. What is it? And if you're asking why, who's this, who's this grease ball up here? You know, why is he even standing up here talking to you about him being just completely, you know, uh, you know, mush mouth and I, 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 I'm totally incoherent. Uh, I was a crazy monster, Japanese monster kid, and I used to write letters to Bob Wilkins on uh, Creature Features, and eventually, uh, because I harassed him so much and stalked him, huh that he just said, I'm going to put this guy on TV and get him out of my hair, maybe he'll calm down. <laughs> so I, for several years I was uh, a Godzilla and Japanese film expert for Channel 2, and that went from Bob Wilkins and the Captain Cosmic show to John Stanley's show, and uh, 
But then after that, I did. I was a total, totally unemployable after Creature Features was off the air. I lost, you know, <laughs> lost my job, lost my sanity, ended up in a bottle with a, with a ship, a wooden ship. <laughs> and I spent about 20 years in there, and then somebody hired me to write a book. But anyway, and also to write for famous monsters of Filmland. Anybody know that magazine? <laughs> And every year we do the Japanese Monsters issue, so if you want to read more about Ultraman and Kikaida and Godzilla, just look at our annual Kaiju issues. We started in 2011, and we do one every year. The new one's out now downstairs. I think they might have back issues at the booth. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, that's the sales pitch. Now we're going to get to the show. Thank you very much for putting up with me. And now, there we go. First up, we're going to introduce the man who played Godzilla from 1984 to 1995, from the movies The Return of Godzilla, otherwise known as Godzilla 1985, to Godzilla vs. Destroya, Mr. Kempachiro Satsuma. Up. He's the man in the silver and red. Yeah. When Hayata used beta capsule, Bin Faria became Ultraman. And speaking of transformations, now we have Hawaii's number one. It should have been San Francisco's number one. For those of you who remember, I think there's two brothers out there, Salvador and Oscar Barcena. They might be here somewhere. They used to watch Kikada, and we used to talk about it on Monday at school. So change, one, two, three, Mr. Bob Daisuke, the star of Kikada. So we'll have the gentlemen each uh, do an introduction. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Empajiro Satsuma. Hey, say, Grazila. Hitoku to Waisatsu. Just want to introduce myself as the. Hey, Grazila no Hoko. Kansha will comment today. I only have three minutes left. Kikaida Ajiro no Ban Daisuke desu. Konnichiwa. Daisuke Ban from Kikaida. Hello everyone. It's been about 15 years since I've actually seen the show. というのは、あの、ま、新しい映画があの、日本でも機会だも作品がもう一度41年ぶりに、え、今月の24日から、え、公開されます。
and it's been 41 years, but the, there's a new uh, Kikaida movie coming out in Japan this month on the 27th. I hope everyone has a chance to see it if it comes uh, available in the theaters in America. Thank you. Thank you. So a lot of people assume that you know these guys have done uh, monster and superhero films and TV shows and you know maybe you know they haven't done much else. And people just tend to ask the same questions sometimes over and over because you have different audiences and people are really happy to to have them come to the United States. Uh, but uh, all of them had careers before they became superheroes, and I was wondering if we could ask them a little bit about their careers prior to becoming you know taking on their their most famous roles for fans. あの、ゴジラになる前にえ、世界のドシロミフリ。ああ。ドシロ。ああ。ドシロ。ああ。ドシロ。ああ。ドシロ。ああ。ドシロ。ああ。ドシロ。ああ。ドシロ。ああ。
ホルゾーキンみたいにねガチャガチャってガチャガチャってこんなんですねあのゴジラみたいにこういうかっこよくないですあいや So it got,、um, the, the design kept changing because they kept adding more and more onto it. So then, So by the time the suit was finished, it was about 150 pounds, but then they had to, he had to get inside it and he needed five people to help him get in. So I, I got in the suit and、uh, eventually after it was finally,、uh, the design was finally finished and I just really, I could not move in it at all. And they kept pulling me to the table. I was tied to a rope and they kept pulling me for you know, scenes where I had to jump or, or scenes like that. So, during the first tests, before actually filming began, he was able to move a little bit. But then the actual filming began and I just I couldn't get it up. So they would lift him up and he would, it, they just couldn't get it up off the ground. So they couldn't get it up off the ground. The special effects dresser were just moving all the ropes around and everything. He just kept losing his balance and it was impossible for him to stand. <laughs> But he said、uh, eventually he got used to it and、uh, the director said it was okay. <laughs> So that's basically what、uh, kind of performances that I had to do、uh, for these monsters. <laughs> It wasn't that fun in the beginning. <laughs> They got angry at me all the time. <laughs> We'd like to ask Mr.、Uh, Furuya about how he, his career started, how he、uh, you know, came to Toho Studios、uh, as a young actor.、Uh, Toho Studios would have a lot of contests for people to enter. Uh, the 15th annual,、uh, I think they called it New Faced、uh, 
Yes, new yeah. faces contest, yes. Um, new faces, new faces. New faces. When I was 18 years old. And that's how I ended up with Toho and became an actor. I uh, worked with uh, Akira Hiroshi. Hiroshi Koizumi. Tsuchiya Yoshiosa. Yoshio Tsuchiya. Mosura. And Mafra. <laughs> X -Sady. I was also a spaceman in Monster Zero. Nick Adams. <laughs> Nick Adams. Oh, with Nick Adams. So no so that no animo to So I was uh, in films with them while I was at Toho. Mosra Gen Juni Dojino Yaku. I was one of the um the natives in the Mothra movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was also one of the reporters that was hanging around with Frankie Sadai as well. Yeah, he's also a reporter in Mothra as well. So in a lot of these early Toho, in a lot of these early Toho films, a lot of the young actors were used to fill in the backgrounds, but sometimes to build up the cast to make it look like there were like you know lots and lots of different characters and lots of lots of uh, you know cast of thousands. You know sometimes they would play three or four different roles in the same film. And there's a film called Eater the Three Headed Monster. Everybody remember that one from yeah, 1964? Yeah. And uh, Mr. Furry, I, I've spotted him. I've seen that film like so many hundreds of times that you start spotting things. And I think I spotted Mr. Furia in about four different roles in that movie. <laughs> and one of them was uh, one of the scientific team that goes to investigate the meteorite that lands that contains Ghidorah. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> and he plays one of the ES dialogue in those scenes. And then there's a, the, the scene where Ghidorah comes out and attacks Matsumoto City, where he flies over the castle. Uh, there's the evacuation scene, people rolling up their doors, and, you know, civil defense or the police telling people to move along, and he plays four different cops. <laughs> and, and the reason why I spotted him is because he's the tallest guy. They would just put the helmet down over his eyes. And, uh, and like this. So, uh, you know, I wonder. If, you know, that was not that. You know, that was uh, very, very typical at the time. And uh, yeah, I like Mr. Freeman to talk about his experiences doing that, filling in so many roles in one movie. あの、映画の中でいろんな役ができるのはBツーというランクの俳優さんなんですよ。A uh, lot of the actors and actresses were divided into main roles, which would be A, and a minor supporting roles, which would be B, and he was a, a member of the B group. A class, B1, B2. They would also have an A, a class that also B1 and then B2. B2の俳優なんで、いろんな役をやらないとお金にならないませんから。He was a member of B2, and um, if he didn't take as many roles as he could, then he wouldn't be making any money. それでいっぱいいろんな役をやります。So I did as many roles as I could. And his first film uh, that he had screen credit uh, was a prison picture. Uh, called the Howling Con Convicts. I, I, I don't remember the Japanese title for the film right now because I'm on stage and I'm frightened. <laughs> but uh, it was a, it was a prison film, and that was like the first film that he was in that had, he had a screen credit on. Uh, it was a breakout picture, you know. Everybody breaks out of prison tonight. There's going to be a jailbreak. So that was like the early '60s, and he appeared in many of the. Uh, the Godzilla pictures and a lot of the other science fiction films at that time. So that's how he got started. That was sort of his, his beginning of his role to Ultraman. And then for Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bomb, uh, we want to find out uh, where, where he came from. Uh, 
Uh, I was uh, simply just a member of uh, an acting troupe. And they were developing a show called Kikaida, and uh, that's when I, and I, they eventually asked me to get involved. And right after Kikaida, I was on a show called Inazuman. Battle Fever. Battle Fever. And the Ninja Captor. So I was in many uh, special effects shows at that time. I was also in uh, several horror films, including a couple in the Ring series. So many people remember the Ring, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the actors. Do you remember, does anyone remember the flashback? When they do, there's a couple of films where there's a flashback sequence. They talk about the doctor who uh, was sort of trying to help uh, Sadako. Yes. That was Mr. Bond. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So I've had a lot of different roles I've been able to try, just as, as um, uh, Mr. Satsuma and Mr. Furio did as well, and uh, it's, it's been a lot of experience being an actor. それは私の心だというような設定の役で、次郎の心は私の心というような、そういうような役柄をやってます。あの、そうです。悪魔、あの悪魔カイロと機械が次郎は両親カイロと悪魔カイロのまあそこで議論の上で悩み苦しむというような
I'm just going to repeat the questions in case people can hear it. He wanted to know uh, what uh, his favorite monster was to battle. Hmm. He doesn't have any um, monsters that he liked very much, but he did have one that he hated. Mothra was the one that I uh, did not like. Why did Godzilla have to lose to him? <laughs> I'm sorry, but Godzilla being um, brought down by pollen? <laughs> you guys are laughing, but I was inside the zoo. <laughs> Mothra is coming up from, out from the sky, but... So I've got to look up while she's attacking me from above. So I can't really shoot my fire. So actually this pollen did come down from Mothra and it was coming into my suit. So there would there would be um, the pollen would be getting in my throat and I had to you know, take a lot of medicine because it was really hurting. <laughs> it also mixed with my sweat and changed the color of my skin. <laughs> so I wasn't able to breathe. It would, it would mix with the sweat, it would form like this cakey paste, and I just I couldn't be, I wasn't able to breathe. So <laughs> So Godzilla was actually... That was the one time Godzilla was actually in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Another question? Right over there? You, sir. Thank You're you. the Godzilla shirt. All 12 of you. Thank you. <laughs> um, for all the actors, what was probably the scariest moment for you on the set of each of your projects? Uh, the question was, uh, what was the scariest experience on any of the sets? And that's for all the actors, right? Yeah, that's for all the guests. Why don't we start with the uh, guests? Okay. Um, and also, on the set today, it's a little bit scary. 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 It's a little bit um, nothing actually on the set, but uh, the scariest thing for him was um, exactly how he can make his performances look cool, how how the editing would make it look cool, how he can make everything you know really entertaining for everybody, for the audience. I was wearing a wetsuit for Ultraman, and also I had a very hard mask on, so uh, the hardest part was uh, actually being able to breathe. So, 
そのぐらいしか開いてるとこないんですよ、仮面で。Very, very tiny holes for the eyes for them to see, and even tinier holes around the mouth for them to breathe. ねねね、and then、uh, the scenes that were filmed in the water,、uh, the mask, there wasn't any place for the, for the water to escape, so it would fill up, and there were a couple of times where he almost felt like he was going to drown. I'll be sure. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 Uh, all the water scenes,、uh, especially with the, with the rockets were firing at me when I was being attacked by the,、uh, the self defense forces.、Uh, those were the scariest ones for me. Just a little more. Just one more. <laughs> 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 なぜかゴジラの喉を狙ってくるんですね。ここ、顔があるところ、パーンパーンってくるんですよ。大変ですよ。I don't think anyone particularly hated me on the movie set, but I want, I, even to this day, I want to know why they always aim the rockets at my throat, which is where I had my eye holes. <笑>それでね、避けようと思ってしたら、滑るのね。もう青のりで汚れてるんだよ。ドームの中は。もうすごくこんなかぶってる。And there was a, yeah, in the big pool, there was a lot of、uh, moss and algae、uh, growing at the bottom, and it was extremely slippery. So, you know, falling and drowning, and that was one when of I, my worries. When I visited Toho Studios in 1985 for the first time, I went to the big pool when it was still there. And to me, it was kind of a religious experience. You know, oh my God, here's the big pool. So, I'm visiting with a couple of other Japanese writers, and Mr.、Uh, Nakano Tero Yoshi, who's the special effects director, and uh, uh, Tanaka Fumio, who's a producer on many of the films, starting with Yacht Monster from Space, were taking us around. And here's this crazy American. I'm the only American, with everybody else is Japanese. And I went up to the pool, and I stared at it for a while, and I went to the edge, and I put my hands in the water. And they said, You don't want to put your hands in the water. <laughs> That's a bad water. There's no chlorine in that pool, dude. <laughs> Put my hands in the water and I did the stations of the cross. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to do it. But yeah, it was a, it's a really nasty pool, and all three of them had had,、uh, these, these gentlemen have had problems with、uh, you know, drowning during, or trying, almost drowning during their performances. And、uh, Mr. Bond had a,、uh, an accident、uh, in a, shooting an episode of Kikaido where he is playing Jiro, the, the, the android that transforms into the, the fighting android Kikaido. And he dives it off a boat into the water head first, and、uh, he hit his head on a rock. And I just want to know if he has any memories of shooting that. <laughs> Yeah, he does remember.、Uh, I was jumping, I was trying to escape from an explosion, and I jumped from a phone, a phone, a boat into the water, and I hit my head, and I lost a lot of blood. And、uh, yeah, I do remember that, and yes, it was painful. And the take where he gets hurt is in the actual episode, but of course they cut out the part where he goes, ouch. You know,、so. uh, luckily, he's with us still today.
And I think we might have uh, time for one more question, but before we close with that uh, last one question, I just want to let everyone know uh, that you can see all of these men's performances uh, on DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, Mr. Uh, Satsuma just had a, a, a large number of his uh, Godzilla films out on Blu-ray, and it also Godzilla vs. Smog Monster and Godzilla vs. Gaia uh, are out on, on Blu-ray right now. Uh, Sony put out some of the uh, the 90s Godzilla films that he started with uh, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah and Godzilla vs. Mothra, etc. Uh, Mr. Furia, you can see Ultraman is available from Mill Creek on DVD. Uh, all 39 episodes are available, and also Mr. Furia uh, was uh, one of the actors without a mask in Ultra 7. How many people have seen Ultra 7? <laughs> and he plays a member of the Ultra Guard named Amagi, Officer Amagi, and uh, so he's in every episode of that show, uh, Sans Mask. So look for that on DVD as well as Ultraman. And uh, Mr. Bond uh, is available on DVD uh, with uh, the TV series Kikaida and Inazuma, and they're available from Generation Kikaida, uh, which you can just go to generationkikaida.com and you can order all the DVDs for uh, Kikaida and uh, Inazuma. And these uh, three gentlemen will be at the show uh, tomorrow as well and at the booth after the uh, presentation today, I believe, unless they break for dinner. I'm not sure I don't have the itinerary, but they'll be at the famous Monsters Pavilion signing autographs uh, today and tomorrow. And so uh, please support these gentlemen. I mean, it's a really like insane thing to be up on stage uh, after watching these gentlemen on television for many, many, many years and, and, and movies. And, and it's, it's a really surreal experience to be up here with all three of them together. So let's put your hands together for the guests. の夢ですが、あの機械だとウルトラマンとゴジラと一緒に戦うようなムービーが映画ができるといいですね。My uh, dream, yeah, my dream is to have a movie with Ultraman, Godzilla, and Kikaida fighting together. <laughs> The Japanese Avengers. So we have time for one more question. And the little man in the red shirt. The strongest would have to be uh, King Ghidorah. There are no weak ones, they're all strong. <laughs> but above all else, Godzilla is the strongest. <laughs> Okay, I think we still do have time, but unless my clock's wrong, we can do another question. So, somebody raise a hand. I'm partially blind, so please make a spectacle of yourself. Gentleman on the far aisle, waving his hand like a madman. <laughs> Shout it out. In the original Ultraman series, I recall in one of the episodes, they put on a Godzilla suit with some, like, thing, and I was... <laughs> Like a flower thing or something. Yeah, like a frill thing. And I was just kind of wondering if, if the Godzilla suit was just hanging around. He says, oh, we'll put this in an Ultraman suit. And would that, is that the moment, a hidden moment, that 
Ultraman and Godzilla fight together, but secretly. After inside the suit that you're talking about, Jiras, it was uh, Haro Nakajima, who was the Godzilla from the Godzilla first 12 movies and many other monsters. He was um, my senior, senior yeah, in the um, uh, Senpai. 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 Mm. So, <laughs> he was uh, even not wearing not, not, not wearing a monster suit. He was a scary human being. <laughs> <laughs> you made a lot of fun of me. <laughs> so in Ultraman, uh, there was this monster Jiras, the, the, the Godzilla one we were talking about. They didn't have any money to make a new monster, so all they did was just add the frill to his neck. <laughs> and of course, it was Haro Nakajima inside the suit. <laughs> So uh, I was I had this scary Nakajima inside the monster suit and I was I was fighting him and uh, I had to I had to win. And he kept punching me and punching me <laughs> during the filming of that episode and I just was waiting for it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I think that was an possibly an actual fight. <laughs> the Ultraman uh, suit is very thin. <laughs> but I had uh, blisters all over my body when I took the suit off. <laughs> But that's, so that's probably why Jiras is my least favorite uh, monster. <laughs> and if my clock on the wall isn't incorrect, we have time for one more question. I think we have five minutes to wrap this up. Is that correct, gentlemen? Uh, they're staring at me like I'm insane. I don't know. <laughs> Who's the person that's telling me it's five minutes? Well, okay, we're going to take five. We're going to do that anyway. So, okay, let's see. At random, gentleman on the far aisle, middle aisle right there. That, no, not behind you, that's you. You stand up, yes. No, no, no. You can stand up and ask that question. No, no, no. The guy behind you, sit down. Just kidding. Get up. <laughs>
熱心な方、特撮ファンが多いので、大変嬉しく思います。I don't get a chance. I don't, I don't get many chances to come to the San Francisco Bay Area at all. But um, I, being here today, it's uh, been really fantastic. I was very happy to see everybody here. So support Mr. Bond by buying Kikada DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm really good. Sure. Awesome. And then he knows them as even fantastic too. So generationkikada.com. Uh -oh. uh, so, uh, 今回来て皆さんにお会いできて本当すごい感謝してるんですけどっていうのはあの東京出る時にある方に言われたんですが今回はアニメフェスティバルなので、えー、特撮関係ウルトラマンとかゴジラとかそういう機械だとかそういうクワルの方はあんまりいないと思うんで。I was、um, before I came here for this festival. I didn't know exactly how many people、uh, were going to be here for. I thought it was an anime convention, and now I see all these people here. I didn't think anyone was going to be here to see us. Oh, でもこんなにたくさんの方がいらしてくれて本当にハッピーです。The look of all of you out there. I'm just happy to see you all and、uh, I'm very happy. Thank you. I told him you only have three minutes. <laughs> I don't think Hollywood makes Godzilla movies. We all make Godzilla movies. And why is that? Because you come to the theater to see the movies,、um, your, your energy just creates more reasons to make them. So, Godzilla is, is really part of every one of us. But one more thing. <laughs> Take care of your health, 